Hi everyone, I'm Ranger Liz and I'm talking to you from Tauram County Park. Now, I know everyone's been a little bummed out that our plans have all been changed because of precautions for COVID-19, uh, the coronavirus. So, I wanted to take you guys with me anyway on a virtual wildflower walk. Uh, so, throughout this walk we're going to be looking at a couple of different species that bloom only during the very early part of spring. They're called spring ephemerals meaning that they are going to fade as the leaves come in on the rest of the trees in the forest. So we only have a very short time to view these really beautiful specimens. So I'm really excited to be able to share this with you uh, so that you can view it in your own home. So stay with me through this walk and we're going to take a look at some really beautiful flowers that are unique to our region. So I'm walking along now on our blue trail here at Chawram. It's about nine tenths of a mile and follows the Chaga River for about half of its length. So we have some really beautiful wildflowers on this trail. It's one of my favorites for that reason in particular. So the terrain can be a little rocky. I would consider this a moderate trail as there can be some challenging terrain to cross, but it's that very terrain that helps us get these really gorgeous wildflowers. So I'll be at a patch of yellow trout lilies very soon. Uh, they're some of the first ones to come up in the spring and I'm really excited to share them with you. All right, so on this hill behind me is a patch of Erythronium americanum, which is a yellow trout lily. Uh, so these are a member of the lily family and they get their name from the dappled pattern that's on its leaves that resembles the pattern on a brown or brook trout. Um, so they're one of the very first ones to bloom, which means these guys are actually almost done. But there's still a few left for me to show you. So they form these really large colonies, and when they're in full bloom, they put on quite a show of these little dainty yellow flowers. Uh, they're considered a nodding flower, meaning they bend over, and then the petals curl up to give them a distinctive shape. So these leaves will fade by midsummer and they'll all go dormant. So by the middle of summer, you wouldn't even know where they were there. But starting around January, February uh, of the next year, they'll all pop back up and there'll be one of the first pops of color for you to actually see in late winter, or early spring. So let's take a closer look at these guys. So just take a closer look here at the yellow trout lily. You can see that distinctive dappling on the leaves. And you can also note that it has six petals, which is a characteristic of flowers that are in the lily family. So here's another flower that I wanna show you. This is called rue anemone. We've got another one growing up here. So these will form a colony of these little white daisy-like flowers, but they're actually in the anemone family. And they will form these colonies of delicate white flowers. But these flowers will actually turn pink after they've been pollinated. So sometimes if you see one that's sort of tinged with pink, you'll know that it has already been visited by a pollinator. So this plant behind me is called Hexastylus heterophylla, also known as variable leaf ginger or variable leaf heart leaf. You can see that it has leaves that are kind of shaped like hearts. So that name's easy to figure out where it comes from. But why ginger? It's not actually related to the plant ginger, like what we would use in our kitchens to season food. But the rhizome kind of has the smell and taste of ginger at least a little bit, although I wouldn't eat these guys. They're very slow growing, so the damage to the root structure can be really, really detrimental to this plant. So we don't wanna actually damage our native wildflowers. But what's super cool about this one, you hear I call it a wildflower, and I promise you it is actually blooming right now. So let's take a closer look and see if we can actually find the flowers. So do you guys see the flower yet? How about now? Getting closer? We have to actually look up under the leaves and sometimes even pull aside leaf litter from the forest floor. But here you see we have a cluster of these pretty crazy, almost alien looking flowers. So 
why do you think that a plant like this would go through all the trouble to make flowers that no one can see that are buried up under the leaves? Well, in this case, it's because the pollinator that this plant is trying to attract is actually beetles. Uh, beetles that are crawling around on the forest floor will find that flower to be a very welcome place to crawl into so that it can then pollinate that flower and this plant can go on to make seeds. So that's why these flowers aren't very obvious to you and me. It's because the main customer is actually a beetle. This beautiful little purpley blue plant next to me here is prostrate blue violet. It's another one of the uh, many types of violets we have here at the park. I think this one's really gorgeous and it's really unique because the main way it forms colonies is by putting out these stolons here and anywhere that these touch the ground it will set down new roots so this colony can, can continue to grow. I think this is just a really beautiful one and it is native to our area. There is a lot of introduced violets uh, that you'll see growing in fields and you know the edges of parking lots and yards and that sort of thing but this one is actually from here so I really love it. So this delicate daisy-like flower I have right here is called Sanguinaria canadensis, better known as bloodroot. So this is one of my personal favorites because it is so unique. Uh, the first thing you'll see is that its flowers appear first before the leaves. Each bud will come up with its stem wrapped in a single leaf. So it is a very unique species and you'll notice that its genus Sanguinaria comes from the Latin word sanguinarius, meaning bloody. So where it gets that name is that inside this flower and the rhizome underneath the soil is a reddish sap. So if you actually cut this plant, it looks like it bleeds. So it has such a unique feature that way. However, I would not recommend trying to see this for yourself because that sap is very toxic. Um, it can actually cause necrosis and tissue death if it stays on your skin for too long. So this is definitely one of those to appreciate but not actually pick. Another thing that's really unique about this plant is that its seeds are gathered and planted by ants. Part of the seed is grown specifically for the ants to eat. So they take this seed they harvest it from the little pod that will follow this flower and then they take that seed back to their nest and they plant it. That way the flower, uh, the plant, will have a nice rich soil to grow in in the future. So that's another reason why native plants are so important and why it's important to have the native insects that go along with them. Thank you all for joining me on this virtual wildflower walk here at Chalmers. It is a unique pleasure of mine to be able to take you all around to enjoy these beautiful wildflowers for this short period while they're in bloom. I hope that you all have been able to learn a little bit about these flowers, and I hope that the next time that you're walking through the woods in early spring, you'll be able to look with some special appreciation at these beautiful little flowers that last for such a long time. Until you're able to come and see us in person, I wish everyone the best.